In part two of our seven part series, we're going to look at multiple disc clutches and bands. In part one, we learned about how a planetary gear set can deliver torque in a gear reduction or overdrive or reverse. If a part is input and a part is held, that third part is going to be output. So how do they hold these parts and how do they drive these parts? Well, they do that through multiple disc clutch assemblies. And the multiple disc clutch assemblies are going to either, as I mentioned, be able to drive a component, drive a part of the gear set, or it's going to be able to hold a part of the gear set to the, to the housing or to the transmission case. And the way they're constructed, and you'll see this in the upcoming video, we've got a series of plates. Some of them have external splines that lug into a housing, and then some of them are going to have internal splines that are going to lug to a hub or a gear set component. And when I, have a, when I need that clutch applied, I can put a hydraulic piston behind that, compress this clutch pack, and make that housing grab onto that gear set component. So that multiple disc clutch assembly gets compressed by that hydraulic piston. And based off of how much force I'm generating behind the hydraulic piston, and based off of the number of friction surfaces I have, and the surface area of the frictions, is going to determine how much torque capacity I've got on that clutch assembly. Also, the type of friction material that we have, and even the fluid in the transmission, is going to affect the torque capacity of the transmission. As I mentioned before, a multiple disc clutch assembly can either provide input to a gear set component from the torque converter, actually drive that gear set component, or it can hold a gear set component, have a hydraulic piston in the case, apply it, and lock a part of the gear set to the case. So multiple disc clutches are used in both fashions, driving and holding. When we were talking about the gear sets, we were talking about driving a part and holding a part, or maybe driving two parts to get direct drive. So how does that actually happen? Well, what we do in this transmission to drive components is we take engine torque, deliver it through a torque converter, which we'll talk about it a little bit later, and that torque's gonna end up going to an input shaft in the transmission. It's gonna drive the internal components of the transmission. And what, what makes an automatic transmission automatic is that we've got these different clutch assemblies in this transmission that will apply and release to effectively grab onto a gear to drive it. Release it so it can let it go. Uh, we'll have these multiple disc clutch assemblies like you see here. I've got, this is a cutaway of an input drum and it basically shows that these clutches live inside this drum. There are three different clutch assemblies in here just for clarity. There's actually a small clutch here. It's an overrun clutch, it's a coast clutch. This is a forward clutch right here and then this is a 3-4 clutch. And this is just one example of a of a 4L60E, and you know, like I said, I made a cutaway of it. We can actually apply this and so forth, kind of giving you an idea what's going on. If we think of how this works, we have engine torque coming in here and driving through the torque converters, can be driving this input drum assembly. So this whole drum assembly is going to receive engine torque. And without any hydraulic pressure in here, none of these clutches are applied, so they're not effectively driving any of these gears. But, like here, for example, this is an internal gear. It's a snap ring, but this is my internal gear right here for this transmission. And see these splines on the outside? These are the splines that are going to lug in or mesh with the friction disks. The friction disks in this drum assembly. So without it applied, you can see, now it wouldn't make that noise in the vehicle, but without it applied, you can see it's not, just, it's not delivering torque from the input shaft to this shaft right here. When I need this clutch applied, so that way I can drive this gear set, hydraulic pressure will actually travel through this passage in the pump. It'll come from the transmission valve body, travel through this passage in the pump, through the shaft behind a piston that'll apply this clutch, and it'll basically lock this clutch to the drum, and by doing that, you're gonna lock that gear to the drum. So, like for example, if I pretend, use my air nozzle that this is hydraulic fluid coming through, transmission fluid, and it applies that clutch, you can see it move. Now, that part of the gear set, this internal gear, is gonna be driven by the input shaft. It's physically connected to it in a sense, or it's, it's connected to it because that clutch assembly applied and grabbed onto it. If I release it, now you can see it's released again. Apply it. See it's pretty much one with the um, main shaft there. Release. 
it's released once again. So that is how we get the ability to drive a component and even hold a component, because there are multiple disc clutch assemblies that I'll show you here in a second that we can use to hold a gear set component to the case. This is a perfect example of how an input drum can drive a gear set and how our multiple disc clutch assemblies operate. When you look at these different clutches, you can see they come in a variety of different designs. Sometimes you'll have a, uh, sometimes they'll be perfectly smooth like this one. Sometimes they'll have little reliefs cut out of them. Might be easier to see on that one, reflection. Sometimes they'll have X's in them, so you'll see different patterns. And you also see sometimes they come in different colors like tan and kind of a red. Sometimes this charcoal color right here. A lot of times you'll see they're double sided, which means they have a friction material on one side and on the other. Sometimes you'll see them where they're single sided frictions, where you might have like one friction that has one side that has, like you can see this one has internal splines and it has friction on one side, but you flip it over and it has steel on the other. But the one that's gonna run next to it is gonna have external splines, steel on one side, friction on the other. So you're still alternating the external, internal, external, internal splines, but you'll always have like a friction touching a steel, a friction touching a steel and so forth. That's, those are called single-sided frictions. That's pretty common. Well, I shouldn't say it's very common, but it, there are a lot of applications for that. Now, the material that the material that most clutches are made out of is just kind of like a cardboard or a paper type material. It's a cellulose type material, and it does have different uh, it, and it does have different compounds in it. And uh, what basically makes it look different are the different compounds they have in it, and they are specific to the transmission and specific to the type of fluid that that transmission uses. So that's the reason why it's important that you use the proper fluid with the whatever transmission you've got, whatever clutches, so that they're compatible. So the torque carrying capacity of a clutch is determined by how many frictions that we have in here. And you can see this one's got one, two, three, four, five friction discs. They're the double-sided friction type, so there's 10 friction areas. So it's also determined by the amount of surface area that we have, so how large these friction discs are. And then lastly, it's determined by how much force we have on the hydraulic piston that's compressing this clutch pack. So if you need more clutch carrying capacity in a, in a clutch pack, you can add, try to add more friction discs in there. Maybe you can put thinner plates or move snapping grooves or so forth. You can change, you can change the, the compound of friction material a little bit. That might affect it, probably not much or you can change the amount of pressure that you apply this piston with. The more pressure you apply the piston with, the more force you'll have on this clutch pack. But with that also comes a drawback that with more pressure, you're gonna fatigue these parts possibly more. Um, you might um, crack a piston or crack the housing or something like that because they're kind of designed to work with standard pressures. And if you jack up the pressure in these transmissions, well then they're working outside their normal operating um, limits and they might cause failure. Okay, now friction discs, or these multiple disc clutch assemblies can also be used to hold a gear set part. I can show you this as an example. This clutch assembly right here is um, out of a 6L80, 6-speed GM transmission. This part right here, this aluminum part that you see, with these big lugs on it, it's lugged into the case. So this aluminum housing does not move. Uh, you take a big snap ring off and you pull that assembly out. And these are the hydraulic passages that apply the clutches in here. So this shaft that rides through this drum, you can see I can spin it right now. But if I, if I applied hydraulic pressure into this passage right here, you can see that clutch apply. Push on it so you can... When that clutch applies, it's going to grab this shell and lock it to the case and that's gonna prevent a gear set part from spinning. So that's the idea. This multiple disc clutch assembly can also be used to hold a gear set component. Although modern transmissions might not be designed using bands so much anymore, they're still very common. There's a lot of transmissions on the road that use them. And it seems like newer transmissions, they don't engineer a band in it anymore, so much at least. Uh, they're probably because they're not as predictable as a multiple disc clutch assembly. But either way, a band is a very commonly used setup. You know, if we look at the vehicles that are on the road, and the idea behind what a band is doing is it's, it's like a belt that wraps around a drum, 
that when I apply it, and I use a hydraulic servo to push on it to actually apply it, and that uh, it's basically going to grab onto a drum assembly and that drum is going to be lugged to a gear set part. So a band can only be used to hold a component. Obviously you can't use it to drive it because one side is going to be anchored to the case and the other side is going to be pushed on by a stationary or a, a kind of a, a hydraulic servo that's built into the transmission case. But it is still commonly used, uh, not so much on transmissions that are being designed and built now, but there are millions of vehicles on the road that still have bands on them, so they're worth studying and understanding how they operate. Once again, a band supplied by hydraulic servo, and uh, it wraps around a solid, smooth, solid shell, and when it clamps on, it's going to stop that part from spinning. So we're going to have it anchored into the case and applied by hydraulic servo. Another component that's not used too frequently anymore is a band. These are, now you're going to still see them in a lot of transmissions just because there's still a lot of vehicles on the road that use them, but they pretty much don't use them in modern or new transmissions that you see that are coming out. Since most transmissions are computer controlled, computer adapted, they like these multiple disc clutch assemblies because they're very repeatable, very reliable. But these bands, I guess, aren't as repeatable, so you don't see them as frequently anymore. So the way a band works is I've got this friction material glued or adhered to this metal strap or band, and it's going to grab onto the smooth surface of a drum. That drum is lugged to a gear set part, and you can see in this case it's a sun gear. So if I apply the band, one side of the band is going to be anchored to the case. The other side, the other side is going to have a hydraulic servo. So when I want to release, I release pressure to the servo, and the part, you know, it could spin within the band, no big deal. Just like if you had a drum break and you had your foot off the brake pedal. And then when I apply, or when I want this to be applied, I put hydraulic pressure behind the servo, and it clamps down, grabs onto that drum and now I can't spin it. So it's a way of locking this drum and this housing assembly to the transmission case. And by doing that, you're gonna take whatever gear it's blind to and lock it to the transmission case. So that's a pretty common setup. Not so common on modern transmissions anymore, but it's very common on uh, many units that are still on the road today.